Obi Amwa is my guest for the morning, and he's a member of parliament for Ekapem South. He's here. He's a member of the National Media Commission, though, and they've been looking like at the new ally they just passed yesterday. And um, we know that the committee that he belongs to, uh, Committee on Subsidiary Legislation, which, uh, right, chair. Mm, which he chairs as well, I, I have to add that. And they passed, uh, they were very instrumental in making sure this was passed, the LI 2224, just to make sure that uh, content, as far as media is concerned, is adequately regulated. It means that now you have to apply to the NMC, the side goes. No, they, I mean, subsequently, when this is. Well, the um, good morning to you and good morning to uh, viewers. Well, the, for the NMC, they have a role that you have to play under the Constitution. They're supposed to also look at standards. So it's a matter of content and standards. Content in the sense that once you're operating electronic communications uh, outfit, you should be able to give an idea of what you want to um, do on your network. So that, for instance, if you want to show certain movies at certain times of the day because of children still awake, etc., etc., all these things would have to be factored in. And then, beyond programming, what also are the standards? You just open your web airwaves for people, for instance, to attack other ethnic groups, other religious groups all those things this, when indeed the constitution has made it clear the limits to which you can go so you can see that somebody can come and buy an airtime or airtime for one hour and spend that hour attacking another religious group either christians or muslims or buddhists or whatever group it's, it's all these things are things that the media commission should monitor and then uh, draw attention to some of these things and, and some of these situations you may even have to suffer penalty if you commit any offense. Mm. So it's an elaborate thing and I think going forward. We need to have a thorough discussion yes, and yes. education of the public yes. on, on this and process. Thankfully, before I agree that there should be a transitional period of three months. So for the next three months, I expect the media commission to do a lot of work, uh, meeting all the uh, media groups so they call that engagement and yes. things like that. Uh, it was done before this, um, these regulations were brought to Parliament. After the regulations have entered into force, as at yesterday, I think the Media Commission and other stakeholders should also find a way of ensuring that within the three months, as much as possible, we educate ourselves, especially producers, presenters, etc. As for the owner, he may be sitting somewhere but he's entrusted a job to other persons to run. So a producer should know what the regulations say. And same way, uh, a manager, all those, a presenter, all uh, of you should know what the regulations say and how you should ensure that you don't cross the line and then put your station or institution. If you have to apply for this, um, the content regulation, what does it mean? Oh, like, yes, you just fill out. And who can? Just a media house any or any operator, any electronic communication. If you say electronic communications, it even involves the mobile phone companies. Mm. Because advertising agencies, the no, not necessarily not advertising. Anybody who produces content or uses content? Yes, on electronic communications okay. content. For instance, the mobile you know now the mobile communication companies, some are able to show um, videos and films on their network. You can test a certain number and you'll be able to assess content and some of the content we, I don't think in the normal circumstances they may even be allowed so some you may assess some um, mobile lines and then you will be exposed to pornography does the airline take care of producers of content well that's just an internal thing by the end of the day you should be able to tell the NMC that this is what we are putting out okay generally for a period and then the LMC will be monitoring mm. to see that indeed that's what you're putting out and whether what you're putting out meets the standards. <laughs> Very interesting. Yes, for instance, phoning. Mm. The fact that you have that service doesn't mean that people should just call in and openly defame people, openly attack people without the other party being your fed the opportunity to also 
speak about it. Why should anybody call um, a network and say that Willem Walker is ABCD or has an ABCD when you, ha you don't have any access? If you know you, you will not grant him access, then you have to be careful with the platform you offer to others, to defame others. Of course, the civil aspect is there. Anybody can take you, anybody can see you any day. But for the media commission, we think that there's a role they need to play to ensure that the media is sanitized. The fact that we have freedom doesn't mean that I mean, there should be no limits or we should not be regulated. So this is one of about four regulations that are in the system to ensure that we have a very decent um, We have to make sure media. as, as a media group also we make the public... Uh, very much aware of some of these things because yes. it's important. <coughs> yes. Mm. yes. Well, why would, before, why would we move on to the next subject? It's still got to do with media. We know social media is on now. Yes. And that one is very much unregulated. What happens? Well, so social media, there, there are problems. One aspect is that. Because they also tend to show content or transmit content. Well, when it comes to content, then the network allowing that content to be shown, we, may, we have to find a way of. What if it's an international network that is always ac accessed through the internet and we have many of them around? Those, those are the issues we need to discuss and see how we, we close the gap. If it means even amending the regulations to bring that on board. But this is a first step and I believe that as we move on, things will be tightened because we, things have been too loose for a long time. For instance, rejoinders, even for the newspaper uh, industry, or it will also affect you. For rejoinders, people feel maligned, defamed, they don't have any recourse. They write to you to retract, you don't, they go to media commission. Media commission takes centuries to be able to be adjudicated. And even when they arrive at the judgment, a person who is judged to have infringed on the law or would have uh, done anything to defame the other party, is not obliged. So There's nothing enforceable. Yes, if you like, go to court and go and enforce your rights. Mm. All these things will have to be addressed. Okay. We, uh, we will be taking a break. When we come back, uh, we'll be joined by Dr. Rashid Pelpo, Member of Parliament for WA Central. And uh, we'll be looking at <coughs> the president, because we've just been speaking about media, not too happy about how the media seem to have interpreted a recent report on anti corruption. And apparently, uh, he says the report had given a caveat. And we know the report also was conducted in just 28 countries in Africa. And the media said, well, Ghana was second most corrupt country on the continent. This has heightened and in increased debate over the last 12, 12 hours about whether uh, uh, Ghana is perceived to be uh, the second most corrupt country, is more corrupt than we think, and how we need to deal with the subject of how the media also tends to do the propagation but what really also is uh, the reality in terms of government's own commitment on the anti-corruption drive we're taking a break when we come back we'll begin the discussions with obm one member of parliament for Ikapim south and dr rashid pelpo who is also in the studio Please stay up. <laughs>